Good day! The topic for this video will revolve around nanobiotechnology. First, what is nanobiotechnology? Let's start by breaking it down. Nano, which comes from the Greek word nanos, meaning dwarf, and in science terminology, it is a term that denotes the tenth to the negative ninth power of something, or one over a billion of a meter. Our DNA is known to have a diameter of 2 nanometers. Just imagine how small that is. Next is bio, meaning life, which in this case is a short term of the word biology, a study of plants, animals, and other living organisms on Earth. Lastly, technology. Technology is the applications of all our knowledge from science and engineering principles, and we harness them for some purpose. Therefore, in nanobiotechnology, we're taking the building blocks of life, specifically the nanoscale building blocks, and trying to invent new ways of putting them together for useful industrial or biological applications. These applications include biosensors that detect and quantify pathogens, food composition alterations, medicine production, and a lot more. You may wonder what's the difference between biotechnology, nanotechnology, and nanobiotechnology. Well, biotechnology is a life science which deals with the study and modification of living organisms and biomolecules to develop pharmaceutical therapies, medical treatments, and agricultural innovations. Nanotechnology deals with materials on a nanometer scale which uses man-made and inorganic materials for better electronic performance and production for various applications. These two fields do overlap in some areas, and this is where nanobiotechnology comes from. It deals with technology which incorporates nanomolecules into biological systems to achieve greater reach and efficacy. Biomolecules are often added to the outside of nanoparticles to target or make use of specific molecules for a given purpose. But What's the difference between biomolecules and nanoparticles? The difference between a biomolecule and a nanomaterial is that even though biomolecules are engineered for various purposes, they are not considered nanomaterials because they are not man-made. These hybrid nanostructures are used to make biosensors or to image certain body parts. They can also be engineered to incorporate them into body systems by altering their solubility in water, compatibility with biologic material, or recognition of biological systems. To give one example, DNA is typically difficult to insert into a cell nucleus because of its strand-like form. However, if the DNA is mounted on a spherical nanoparticle, it may pass through the cell and nuclear membrane with ease. The question now is to whom or for what nanobiotechnology is for. Generally speaking, nanobiotechnology is used for different industrial and biological applications. One example is its medical applications to treat people from diseases especially but not limited to those that have genetic disorders. Another beneficiary is the food production industry, in which nanobiosensors could be used to detect pathogen microorganisms in food or even help for manufacturing food products. Nanobiotechnology may also help in reducing energy consumption by providing nanocomposites that provides thermal insulation. It is also used to achieve less harmful chemical processes in energy production sectors, which may help in environmental sustainability. The impact of nanobiotechnology in our society is more than evident. With varied and interesting developments in industry, environmental sustainability, medical applications, and a lot more. As such, Nanobiotechnology has its following advantages and challenges. 
In the field of medicine, diseases would be diagnosed and detected at earlier stages through the conjugation of nanoparticles with targeting in vivo imaging agents and tumor markers. Diseases such as tuberculosis and multiple sclerosis would be diagnosed through the use of smartphone-based nanobiosensors with silver and fullerene-coated cellulose acetate sensors. Utilization of growth factors, cell therapy, injectable biopolymers, and biomaterials aid in regenerating skin in terms of tissue repair due to severe burns, bruises, and chronic wounds where available treatments are not sufficient enough to prevent formation of scars. Nanobiotechnology is also advantageous to brain research and neuroscience. Devices such as carbon nanotubes can integrate bionic devices with the human brain. In the field of agriculture, Nanobiotechnology can replace conventional farming through the use of nanofabricated materials where more plant nutrients can be imparted to the soil. Zero-valent nanoparticles can also treat soils that are contaminated with heavy metals and pesticides. Furthermore, genetic manipulation can produce more productive crops since it can enhance their resistance to diseases and reduce their dependence on pesticides, fertilizers, and irrigation. In the environmental sector, the use of nanobiotechnology through bioremediation to clean hazardous wastes of pharmaceutical industry, petroleum wastes, chemicals, wastewater, and contaminated soil is advantageous. In the food sector, the use of biosensors for detection and quantification of pathogens for alterations in food compositions, organic compounds, and other chemicals in food, and for preservation of fruits using thin edible films, can prevent food decay and poisoning. Nanobiotechnology also includes the transgenic production of milk, protein pharmaceuticals, and nutraceuticals, which are very valuable in this sector. On the other hand, it is not just advantages that nanobiotechnology can provide as it also comes with challenges. For health, safety, and medical issues, certain nanomaterials that are used are considered more toxic than quartz which can cause serious damage in humans. Implanting nanodevices in humans is also still not fully accepted by the society. Also, nanomedicine can be manipulated to harm the body instead of healing it. For the environmental issue, the wastes produced from the manufacturing of nanomaterials can be classified to be dangerous due to its very small size. The possibility of them floating in the air and easily penetrating animal and plant cells are too risky since they are toxic to airborne, soil, and aquatic organisms. Societal issues include the concern regarding the military and terrorist use. As it is considered far easier to create destructive nanotechnological device rather than creating constructive ones, there is a possibility that nanobiotechnology can bring destruction and danger if fall into the wrong hands. Applications of nanobiotechnology First, let's look at tissue engineering. Through the years, scientists are now able to grow different stem cells that could function depending on what it needs to be. They found that extracellular matrix which acts as a support for the tissue is similar to nanofibers. Cells can attach themselves or migrate into the matrix. It also provides cell diffusion, growth, and development. Before a tissue is formed, cells should be attached well in the matrix so they can reproduce to create a tissue. The more cells reproduce, the faster they can form a tissue. The same thing can be done to nanofibers. By obtaining cells from a patient, new tissues formed through nanofibers could be cultivated 
to form into a functioning organ of the human body. Scaffold is a nanofiber structure suitable for cell cultivation. This scaffold could be permanent or temporary, and when it has performed its function, it deteriorates or it becomes food for the cells. Nanobio3D matrix developed by Navigate is an example of such scaffold. Nano-enabled sensors Nano-enabled sensors or nanobiosensors could be up to 20 to 25 nanometers in size which is about 50,000 times smaller than a grain of sand. These biosensors can be implanted inside the patient's body. It will be powerful enough to detect a single molecule. The nanosensors are designed to hunt and identify specific molecules produced by cancer cells. They will be looking for specific types of biomarkers or tiny indicators of an ailment inside the body, like a malignant change to a gene. These sensors will be able to diagnose cancer at its earliest stage and will be able to make diagnosis in a fraction of the time it takes today. Antibacterial Treatment Bacterial resistance is a real and dangerous phenomenon. However, a solution for this may be in something very small but very effective. Researchers have focused on using nanoparticles such as silver nanoparticles because it has antibacterial properties. Silver nanoparticles can penetrate through the bacteria. The nanoparticles will destroy the bacteria from the inside. Reactive molecules created by the nanoparticles will tear everything apart and they can order the bacteria to die. Nanobiotechnology is an innovative technology that can also be used in food sector which results in improvement of food quality and safety along with the development of food products. Food packaging is considered to be one of the earliest commercial applications of nanobiotechnology in the food sector. Several nanotechnology-enabled food packaging are utilized now. Examples, improved packaging whereby nanomaterials are mixed into the polymer matrix to improve the gas barrier properties, as well as temperature and humidity resistance of the packaging. These polymers are antimicrobial and can be used as packaging in films and coatings. Active packaging is the use of nanomaterials to interact directly with the food or the environment to allow better protection of the product. For example, silver nanoparticles and silver coatings can penetrate the bacteria and provide antimicrobial properties. Smart packaging is designed for sensing biochemical or microbial changes in the food, for example, detecting specific pathogens developing in the food that can result to spoilage. Packaging incorporating nanosensors for sensing and signaling of microbial and biochemical changes extends shelf life. The use of nanotechnology in the field of medicine offers the outlook of new tools for the treatment of human disease and the improvement of human biological systems and could help the way we detect and treat damage to the human body and disease. Nanorobots are small devices that can actually interact on the same level as bacteria and viruses do. They are capable of building atoms and molecules and can open and close cell membranes or travel through tissue and enter them. These machines will be able to correct a single molecular disorder like DNA damage or enzyme deficiency. The mechanism of nanorobots is first, the DNA molecule will be attached to the nanobot surface where the nanobots scans nucleotides. As it scans the molecule, nanobots are seeking for damaged fragments. When a damaged fragment is detected, the invalid fragment is removed. Then, the DNA is repaired. Another application of nanotechnology in the field of medicine is currently being developed that involves employing nanoparticles to deliver drugs, heat, light, or other substances to specific types of cells. Particles are engineered so that they are attached to deceased cells, which allows direct treatment of those cells. 
This technique reduces damage to healthy cells in the body and allows for earlier detection of disease. What is the progress of nanobiotechnology in the Philippines? Nanotechnology is the synthesis, manipulation design, and application of a functional system or material at nanoscale. It draws on multiple disciplines and has a wide variety of applications from agriculture, food safety, biosensors to biomedical diagnostics. In year 2008, Global investment in nanotechnology R&D reached 10 billion US dollars. The Philippines has launched its nanotechnology research initiative, the Department of Science and Technology, Philippine Council for Advanced Science and Technology Research and Development, or DOST, PCAST RD. It has the following sectors in priority: semiconductor, information technology, energy, agriculture, medicine, and environmental protection. In the Philippines, DOST PCASTRD prompted extensive R&D initiatives for nanotechnology in the country by launching a 10-year strategic roadmap crafted by a group of interdisciplinary local scientists in 2009. The first batch of research projects was granted a preliminary budget of 60 million US dollars and have received government and private sector support since then. Seen here is the 10-year strategic roadmap by DOST PCASDRD. In an effort to fortify economic development and technological advancement of the country, DOST PCASDRD prioritized the area of semiconductor, information and communication technology, energy, agriculture, health, and environment. Among the recipients of project funding is the National Institute of Molecular Biology and Biotechnology of the University of the Philippines, Las Banas, or UPLB Biotech, which houses its own nanobiotechnology laboratory. Currently, UPLB Biotech endeavors are leaning towards the formulation of nanofertilizers for effective plant growth promotion in higher crop yield, and nanobiosensors for biological and chemical activity detection in agriculture and food safety areas. The Institute's Nanobiotechnology Laboratory has already developed notable products including the Biotech Nano Plant Growth Regulator. The product primarily contains compounds like auxin, cytokinin, and gibberellin, which are naturally occurring plant hormones that operate harmoniously as chemical messengers in stimulating root and shoot formation, stem elongation, seed germination, flowering initiation, and the overall developmental processes of plants. Nano-encapsulation, commonly adopted from medical and pharmaceutical applications, was the technological principle utilized in packaging the said plant growth regulators, derived from locally isolated plant growth promoting bacteria. Biotech Nano Plant Growth Regulator tested effective in several agriculturally important crops including cassava, coffee, jambalaya, banana, and other ornamental plants through its enhanced delivery in terms of higher solubility and dispersion, leading to improved nutrient absorption and uptake ratio in plants. Aside from its promising impact on crop production, Biotech Nano Plant Growth Regulator also addresses the current obstacle in environmental pollution as a consequence of inappropriate and excessive use of synthetic and toxic chemicals as fertilizers. Locally, the increasing government and private sector support for nanotechnology inclined studies have resulted in numerous remarkable nanomaterial based products, attending to some of the critical problems of the Philippines. For example, scientists of the Department of Science and Technology Industrial Technology Development Institute or DOSD ITDI have developed an organic packaging material consisting of clay and starch.